So after Jimmy Maher did his review of the SSI game Pool of Radiance, I wanted to get a copy of it since I never actually played it back in the day. I went on Facebook and I was able to contact Tony Bogan who actually had a copy of it that he was willing to sell to me. And so now I've just gotten it and I'm going to go ahead and we'll open it up and try the game out. So this was the first game in the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons line that was released from SSI. And if you read Jimmy Maher's blog, you'll know that SSI really worked hard to actually get the licensing deal from TSR. And this is a real coup for them and it actually really made their company. So opening it up, ah, there is the translation wheel which we need to actually play the game. Uh, here's the quick start card. There's the rule book. Here is the adventure's journal. That's some product information card from SSI. And finally here are the discs. Okay, so the first thing that Pool of Radiance asks is if I want to copy my discs. It's interesting that this game had no copy protection on it. You could copy it with pretty much any copy program. And the main form of the copy protection was with the translation wheel, as well as the adventures journal. And throughout the journal, there's all sorts of entries that you're supposed to read, and people in taverns will give you hints, and then you have to look them up. So we're going to say no. And yes, we want sound, of course. Um, sure, we'll use the joystick. So for fast mode, you can select this if you have an accelerator card or a 2GS. And we don't have either one of those, so we'll say no. And now we're asked to flip the disc over. So side two. So Pool of Radiance is set in the city of Flan. And the Adventurer's Guide actually provides a really nice history of Flan it says the city of Flan built on ruins upon ruins is a city at war it is divided between the human forces of the council and those evil forces that hold a great deal of the city under their sway the council has proposed that clearing the city by means of recruited adventures is the way to go the promise of great treasure and the myth of the pool of radiance provides adventures with an irresistible draw which of course is why we're here so first thing we need to do is decipher the code word and we're going to match the elven rune with the dwarven rune and the code word under the path is beware. Alright so I'm trying to design my thief here. I've got a female elf. She's neutral good. She's got a dexterity of 18 and the funny thing is, is the default character portrait is the same no matter what. So let's see if we can change the head here. Oh, no, that's... Okay. I'm kind of looking for... Mm, not bad. Ooh. I think we'll go with this one. Kind of like that blonde elf look, especially with the buck teeth. So now let's see if we can change the body. Whoa. All right, I'm thinking that looks pretty good, so we'll just say keep for that. And here's her icon, so we gotta change that because we've already used that one for our fighter. And you can see some definite color fringing there. Greetings, courageous ones. I am Rolf, appointed by the council to introduce newcomers to the fair city of Flan. If you will accompany me, I will start the tour. So we've just started the game. We've got a party of adventurers, and I don't have any equipment yet, so that's probably the first thing I'll have to do is buy equipment. 
Beyond this gate are the monster-ridden areas of the old city we are slowly preparing for settlement. The council offers a generous reward to those who clear areas of monsters. So when you're using the user interface in Pool of Radiance, it's essentially done with either the arrow keys or the joystick. And you use, at the bottom, there's a set of menu items which you can use left and right to get to, hit return to actually select one of these. In your party here, you can actually use the up and down arrow keys to select who is the current character. And this affects things like view or cast and presumably combat also. And we can actually look at our characters. So, for example, here's Gut Boy, my human fighter. He's lawful good. He looks very happy there. And let's take a look at Snarly there. So here's Snarly Unready. He's a cat, a good fighter. Uh, he looks a little unready there. You have a limit of 15 characters for the names, so you have to get a little creative. And let's take a look at Morgan Ironwolf. This is my female elf thief. We'll take a look at Pious Polly here, the lawful neutral cleric. She looks very Joan of Arc-like. Here's Spiffy Wiz, my male human cleric. And one thing about this game is it actually follows the AD&D 2nd Edition rules pretty closely. So you have character level limits depending upon your race. And there's also limits if you have a female fighter in strength. Uh, so a lot of these rules actually got changed or modified in later editions of D&D. But with the Pool of Radiance and all of the SSI games, you're sort of stuck in some sense with the second edition rules. So you have to be a little careful when you're creating your characters, uh, most especially with level limits. So if you pick anything other than a human, you're gonna be limited to certain levels for all of the classes except for thief. And so a lot of the times your party is gonna end up just being mostly humans. I have one uh, elf thief and that's it, all the rest are human. So there's Spiffy, and finally here is Zeta Spangle, my female human wizard, uh, looking pretty tough there with her purple, either purple hair or purple headgear. So we'll go ahead, last thing we're gonna do is save the game so that we have a good known starting point. So we'll save this, and now we'll go and try and buy some equipment. All right, so the way movement works is right now I've got a 3D view of the town and the direction I'm facing. Here it tells me what direction I'm facing, which is north, how much game time has elapsed in minutes, and then my actual position as a square 0, 2. And if we switch to the area view, so we'll switch to area. This gives me a top-down view of where I am. And we can actually compare this to the map. So here I am at 0, 2. So presumably 0, 0 is here. And you can see I'm right up here near the, near the Temple of Soon. So I guess what I need to do is go to the shops and taverns over here and buy some equipment. All right, so it looks like I've gotten myself into a drunken brawl in the middle of a tavern. So this will give me a chance to play around with the combat system. For combat, you have basically move, and this is how you either move your character or attack an enemy by just moving into their square. You can aim if you have a ranged weapon. Um, you can use something like, maybe like a potion or something like that, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, you can view your character if you want to switch weapons, and you can also do quick, which just puts your character under the control of the computer. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have Morgan Iron Wolf, the thief, try and attack someone. So we'll move and we will move in the direction of, let's say, one of those thieves or whoever they are up above. Uh, so that'll be key number one. And then, okay, so I attacked, oop, a nomad, I guess. Okay. And now let's see here. Oops, here's... Wow, that's cool. He just threw, I don't know who the aides are, but they just shot an arrow at somebody or something. And so you can see that the game works by taking turns based on initiative, 
pretty much doing nothing here. The aids are doing all the damage, and this battle's gonna be over pretty soon, I bet. One good thing about tavern brawls is you don't actually die if you get killed, you just get knocked unconscious, but it does take down hit points, which are hard to recover. Continue battle, no. The party has won, each share is six experience points. All right, excellent. Who's this guy? Oh, uh, the city watch. Do you run away or stay to confront them? Oh, I'm gonna run. All right, got outside. Whew. So we need to go rest now so we can actually get our spells. So let's go find some safe place to rest. All right, so I've got my spells selected and Pius Polly has three spells, three first level spells to memorize. So her rest time has to be a minimum of four hours and 45 minutes. So that's four hours just to start the spell memorization and then 15 minutes per spell since they're each first level. All right, so I've rested, I've got all my spells, I am up to full strength and I'm about to head off into the unsettled areas of Flan, into the slums. So here we go. So now I've entered the monster crawling slums of Flan. Small ugly things scurry from beneath your feet. In the distance an alarm sounds. And I'll just march forward and see what happens. I spy a group of seedy looking orcs. So I'm going to combat. My battle begins. All right. Well, I think that's a good review of Pool of Radiance. And I'll just leave it here with me battling the orcs and trying to rid the slums of Flan of all of the monsters and orcs and other villains. So thanks for watching.